Hey everybody, I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Little Pigeon news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Uh, this is episode number 174 of the show. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, this is going to be a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, I'll be doing some traveling this week, so I'm recording a little bit earlier than I normally would. Uh, I only have three reviews for you this week and some great Little Pigeon news before we begin. I want to give a quick shout out to Jordan Harple for joining the podcast's Patreon and helping to support us there. So thank you, Jordan, for being a great supporter. Um, if you two want to join the Patreon, you can join us at uh, patreon.com slash Uh well, I have three new reviews for, for everyone, though, uh, and that includes Stars Awoken, A Little Bitty Apocalypse, The System Apocalypse, book number seven, also Dungeon Craft Online, book number one, Endless Dungeon, part one, and The Dark of Chronicles, book number three, Pathways. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to hit up Lit RPG News. And in Lit RPG News, we'll have a couple stories here. Uh, first, I want to give a quick congratulations to Dakota Kraut on his release of his latest book in the Divine Newton series, the last one in that in that that story arc there. Um, the, the novel had a massively successful launch, hit all the way up to number 12 on all of Amazon's paid novels. Um, that's out of all Amazon, not just any specific category, which is super awesome and amazing for him. Uh, so congratulations to Dakota and Mountain of Press. Um, in other little bit of news, we have uh, Dave Wilmarth. He not only released the latest novel in his uh, Dark of Chronicle series this week, um, he also did a written interview with the Game Lit Society. So definitely go check that out. Uh, we have a link in the show notes. And also, the Independent Audiobook Awards will be live broadcast on June 7, 2019 at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, you can watch at the link below. Uh, it's actually apparently sponsored by Mountain Dole press uh you actually see their logo which is kind of neat on that page um there's a whole game lit category with a bunch of like familiar authors and narrators um who are nominated um and uh, dakota grout will be presenting that award so congrats uh, again link in the show notes for that particular one to watch it live on june the 7th when it is broadcast um also in other Little Bitty News, the Little Bitty Podcast will be at the Here Now Festival in Kansas City. We'll be moderating a panel on Gamelit and Little Bitty with some amazing authors and narrators, including Jeff Hayes and Andrea Parsno, uh, members of the Samba Theater crew, along with authors like Dakota Kraut, Charles Dean, Dave Walmart, and Harmon Cooper, and myself, of course, narrating and, or not narrating, moderating and talking. Uh, we're hoping to get a nice turnout of the crowd. Um, we're going to be uh, at the Kansas City Public Library's Park Plaza Truman Auditorium at uh, Saturday, June 8th from 11 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. So we got a whole hour and 15 minutes to fill. Uh, so please, if you want to help us out, um, please leave questions for the participants in the comment section, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, wherever that is. Um, and I'll collect them and I'll ask the authors towards the end of that particular section. So we make sure we have some audience participation in case nobody shows. Um, uh, but also, I'll be trying to live stream this uh, so everyone can actually watch and actually also ask questions during the live stream as well. So there you go. Um, on to stuff that is out now. The stuff that uh, has come out recently, having a chance to read it, though, including uh, Steel Line, which is Hub World book number three. The third book in the Monster Hunter NYC series is also out as well. Um, Realm of Noria book number two is out. Irrevelant Jack 2 is also available. Um, Somerset, the rules book number one, has been published this week. Um, the third volume in the Re-Alternate World Online series. The one that always has that same cover art. Also, Realm Walker, Fate and Dreams, the book number three. Uh, and the third and last book in the uh, Medium series, The Small Medium, Well Done by Andrew Sipple, is also out as well. On to new Lit RPG audiobooks. We have a couple there. Monster Hunter NYC. After about a year of development and work, uh, including original soundtracks, original songs in the novel, that is finally out on Audible. So um, definitely looking forward to giving that one a listen to at some point. Also out, though, is New Era Online, book number three, Life Reset, Hobnobbing. 
that that is an audiobook. And also, in upcoming Liberty D, which is just where I read a bunch of stuff coming out in the near future, including Dungeon World Book Number 2, which will be out on June the 5th, a Dungeon Core experience. Um, reading it online, Absolution, the Alchemic Weaponer Book Number 2, will be out on June the 5th, according to the publisher's uh, Facebook page. I guess there's a snag with their pre-order page, which is why we don't want to look at the show notes anymore. I checked under this weekend and just went to an error page, and I saw... I looked them up and they said that there's uh, just a snafu there, but they're looking to publish it anyways about uh, June the 5th, which is Wednesday. So hopefully that'll actually be out on time. Um, On June the 10th, it'll be Apostles of the Sleeping Gods, Discardium, book number two. On June the 10th as well, it'll be Ruins of Rimnar, The Conjurer. Uh, I think that's the fifth book in that series. Uh, On June the 11th, it'll be Troll Nation, The Rogue Dungeon, book number three. On June the 13th, it'll be Home, Siege Home, the sixth book in the Good Guy series. On June the 14th, it'll be Login Recoded, a Alert RPG novel, in Sipper, <laughs> in Sipper Online, book number two. Uh, June the 20th, it'll be City of Freedom, Adam Online, book number two. June 20th as well, Gin Tamer Evolution, third book in that series. Uh, June 22nd, this was actually a modified date for this one. It was originally supposed to come out at the beginning of June, which is now, um, but it has been shifted to June 22nd, that's Kingdom Come, a Literary to Dragon Rider Adventure, the Archemia Online Chronicles, book number three, which is again shifted to June 22nd. Um, June 25th, it'll be Shift, book number two. On June, sometime in June, rather, it'll be Ball of Light Evolution. That one's actually being published by um, by someone, I don't you know, I, Name's looking at R.A. Chen is, is actually the writer on that one. Uh, on uh, July 18th, it'll be the Time Master, Interworld Network, book number one. July 23rd, Cannibal, Demon of the Mind, po- Post Apocalypse Survival RPG. This one's actually a, 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 a Russian translation, so see how that turns out. On Also in July, at some point, it'll be Nora Hazard, book number three, Accounts Papal by Blaze Corvin. Uh, August the 5th, it'll be Hero Go, Champions Playing, book number three. Uh, August the 8th, it'll be the new book from Vasily Panko, uh, Invasion, book number one. And uh, August 31st, it'll be Zones of Alcastria, The Dragon Gates, epic game of RPG. And uh, sometime in August, it'll be the second book in the first song series. So those are all the novels I know that are coming out in the near future. On to new releases and reviews. And first up for review this week is The Stars Awoken, A Liberty Apocalypse, The System Apocalypse, book number seven. It is 320 pages, $4.99 instead of available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. John Lee has left Earth behind as he travels to the capital of the Galactic Council. Seeking rest at an answer to what the enigmatic system is, John plans to spend his time reading and researching on Irvana. But fate has other plans for the human paladin. Faced with the new quest and a galactic society that is as unfair to its citizens as it was on Earth, John must decide if his desire for a quieter life outweighs his conscience. There we go. Um, easy review. This is the seventh book in the series. I've read all, all the other six before, so if you're this far into any series, you're probably a fan, and I am. Um, this is actually a really good reset of the series of the main character in a larger galactic arena fighting well-trained fantasy aliens and system users. Uh, the story definitely shrinks with it being more about the main character um, and his action adventures with an emphasis on uh, player versus player combat, training, and the galactic guild quests as an avenue for adventure. Uh, there's still a connection to Earth and the events there, but this is again a new story arc for the series and I personally like the reset so for me you get to score 7.6 out of 10 again i write i genuinely appreciated that the scope of the story really did shrink down to just the main character and what he's doing and also like his companion and those action adventures much more intimate story that i i just enjoyed more um get to score again 7.6 out of 10 for stars awoken a lit rpg apocalypse the system apocalypse book number seven Next up, we have Dungeon Craft Online, book number one, Endless Dungeon, part one, written by Richard J. Thorne. It is 90 pages, uh, $2.99 that is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Awoken on the cold, hard dirt in a near pitch black underground cavern, Cassandra Flynn must face the real possibility that she is a digital representation, a player, as it were, in an unknown game. How did she get here? 
Where is her real body? Did she even have a real body? Facing a myriad of unanswered questions, she must learn about her new world and forge a life for herself in this timeless, endless dungeon. With only a wand, a pickaxe, and a certain spunky pet raptor by her side, will Cass uncover the secrets of the game, or stumble to her death in the inky blackness of the unknown? Who knows what lies on the other side, if anything? This is a slice of life um, kind of trapped in a game story um, with some Minecraft elements used to shape the landscape, build and craft. Um, story wise, it's pretty slice of life. Uh, the main character wakes up in the game world with no memory how she got there and has to learn how the endless dungeon works. She explores, follows quests, prompts, kills mobs and crafts. Um, there's this minor cyberpunk element with permadeath and trap players and corrupted code. I didn't particularly like it myself, but it's also not a big part of the story. Um, also, there is a very sudden ending uh, to the story, which is why it's probably titled Part 1. Um, and I know just some people, some readers aren't going to enjoy that aspect of it, but it is what it is. Um, the RPG mechanics are, are pretty good, pretty familiar to most gamers. They are automated in, in this instance, with the main character gaining new spells and abilities and crafting recipes as she levels. Personally, I would have loved to have seen more choice in the regard, like her being, having the ability to, to choose... Uh, those abilities and spells as she levels. That's not the case here. I did, however, like the way that health and mana progression uh, was handled in the story with like actual die rolls, in this case, a D6, um, used to determine those increases as the main character leveled. I actually enjoyed the Minecraft elements um, used to shape the land and crafting. I thought it was a ni nice little bit of, of game mechanics you don't see in a lot of uh, literary stories. Um, I, uh, although I do think it was actually underutilized when thinking of the story as a whole, it's more used in the beginning and also as like this chosen one aspect. Um, I just thought it could have been used a little more creatively, um, but it was nice. It was, it was neat. Um, a few of the story and game mechanics did drop my enjoyment though. Um, there's a pet summoning raising mechanic on the story and while the pet is cute and interesting, um, it's the pet is also honestly smarter than the main character. Um, instead of the main character figuring something out, the author uses the pet to explain something to her often. Um, it makes some of the gains that the main character gets feel cheaper since they're handed to the main character in some respect. Uh, also, the pet she summons is a higher level than her, which I thought was a weird thing. Um, and, and it just kind of felt off the entire time because the main character's pet often does more damage. And and, and it, the fact that it is main, a higher level character, a higher level than the main character felt weird without some other mechanic explaining why that was the case. Whether it was like some weird meta magic feat or some sacrifice or a teaming feature that explained it. Um, so what is like a weird off mechanic that just kind of bless in mind you because it doesn't really make sense to my brain. Um, the magic system is also very wand wavy. Um, the main character actually just simply imagines or wishes kind of her new spells and they show up in her spell book. Um, there are a couple places where the main character channels powers from the earth instead of using her mana, effectively ignoring the game mechanics that are established. Um, and while these are just kind of minor things, um, they exist because of that permadeath aspect and where, it, which honestly, the story doesn't need, um, but it, it is in the story. And so the author has to save his character sometimes. So there's some very um, thick plot armor used in the story just because the author decided to use permadeath in the story. And so, you know, automatically the main character is not going to end up dying at, at any point. Um, overall, there are some new uh, elements of the story that I actually enjoyed. Um, it's a decent read. If you don't mind the thick plot armor for the main character, I minded though. So it just kind of wasn't enjoyable for me. It's not a bad story. Um, it's not even like boring. Um, it just wasn't good for me. So for me, it's a score of six out of 10. Uh, that's Dungeon Craft Online book number one, Endless Sunday Part One with a score of six out of 10. And next we have the Dark Elf Chronicles book number three called Pathways written by Dave Wilmarth. Uh, this is 363 pages, $4.99 that is available on Kino Limited. Here's the author's description. Mace and Sherry continue to pursue their mission to eliminate the Black Flame. 
Nearing the city of Graf, they and the crew of the Sea Sprite were ambushed on the river. After suffering losses and stopping to make repairs, they have been reproached by two drow thieves walking out of the woods. An epic battle awaits them in Graf, where they'll try to eliminate Gera, the drow princess priestess who has become master of the Black Flame. Griff and Lisa are leveling quickly so they can join Mace and Sherry at Arkstrom, but they need to risk a trip to the real world surface for a food run and are unaware that two monstrous zombie titans are awaiting them at the grocery store. Another survivor is found, one with the skills and knowledge to potentially speed up the process of getting them all permanently uploaded into the game, but he's far away in facing real-world challenges of his own. The kingdom building continues along with the crafting, epic battles, diplomacy, new magic spells, legendary loot, and intrigue, but can all the humans survive the zombie apocalypse long enough to upload themselves? So it's a, a bit of a wordy <laughs> description but actually i think it does a really good job of kind of describing the now three um narrative structures in the story the three points of views that are described between the main character his companion um griffin lisa which is another group and i think uh, it was australia or new zealand and then a new survivor that is found which we'll talk about in 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 the review um and those three um stories are actually kind of combined together where that they each have their own um zo- I want to say zombie apocalypse uh, definitely apocalypse story structure there uh, but then they also all kind of intermingle because they all also go into a fantasy vr mmo to like survive and communicate and try to find other survivors um it's one of those weird quirky things about this particular story it combines a fantasy virtuality mmo action adventure stuff um this very little pg um but then also a just like straightforward apocalypse story that doesn't have any rpg aspects to it so it's a very interesting combined story um this story continues on with the same kind of good storytelling that you've hopefully enjoyed in books one and two um it has it, it walks a very fine line between real life apocalypse stuff and fantasy vr mmo adventuring things the um apocalypse this is definitely front loaded into the first and middle portions of this of the story with a lot of the major fantasies happening in like the mid and and part of the story um but at least all these characters are coming together more often now. Uh, there's also the addition of Tex, which is actually a very fun character in the story. Uh, a rootin' tootin' cyber neurologist. I actually like the character a lot. I also liked how the author pimps his Fibble merch in the story. It was just super fun to see uh, the descriptions, mostly because I've seen the, the artist pictures he uses for his actual merch. So it was a nice kind of uh, call to his merch table. Uh, game mechanic-wise, it's the same stuff as before. There's an expansion on king building stuff, though and crafting plus the usual action and adventure stuff. Um, overall though, I personally kind of like the survivalist apocalypse stuff a little bit more than the VR MMO fantasy, but it's also really good and engaging and interesting. Um, I had a good time reading it. It gets a score of 7.5 out of 10. That's Dark of Chronicles book number three, Pathways with a score of 7.5 out of 10. And that's it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening, for watching. Remember, you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, on Patreon, on our webpage, uh, on a bunch of other nice little pretty Facebook groups, of course, uh, for you to hang out with. If you enjoy the podcast and want to support us in any way, shape, or form, you can find out all the ways to do so at com slash support. Uh, but again, until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. And and. and and hopefully we can all hang out together. And again, I'm going to try to live broadcast uh, from the Heron Festival in Kansas City this upcoming weekend. Um, so ch- we can chat then. You can see all the, all the Little Bridge authors that are going to be showing up there. And the narrators is hanging out, uh, having a good time together. And if you happen to be in the area of Kansas City, Missouri during the weekend, come on by. I'll try to broadcast where we're hanging out uh, to, to chill. But like I said, a bunch of Little Bridge authors are going to be there. Uh, so hopefully it'll be a really fun time. Um, but it, Till we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, remember to go read some lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody.